back at you with another video from 80s Nut. All right, guys, this is part two, dismantling the Bose Wave. I guess we stopped basically just illustrations and didn't really dismantle anything in part one. Um, I uh, was describing the, the or the, sorry, going into the differences between the newer generation and the older gen. All right, first thing I wanted to show you guys is on the bottom. Bottom has a nine volt battery and it sits right there. Chances are this nine volt battery was here or installed from uh, when the when they first uh, manufactured this unit. Okay, don't just attempt to pull on attempt to pull on the um, the back end here, the soft vinyl slash there's a small board there with the um, with the tabs what will end up happening is you'll rip this whole thing apart it's not just because it's, old, it's also very weak so what you do is you get on the positive side get a shank or pick and uh, you're gonna put it right below there and you're gonna push up so I'm doing this without my right, okay so turn it like so, grab it, and it comes right off. Um, don't just attempt to pull the darn thing out without assisting and actually pushing up. Do it on the positive side, not the negative side, right? So do it on the positive side of the nine volt battery and that's how you take that battery off. You would think that it would be common sense, except it's not the, you'll end up destroying the terminal and it'll be a pain in the butt to fix that. And I'll show you guys how if you need to, but do that and you don't need to fix it. All right, now, oh, if you're wondering what the nine volt battery is for, the nine volt battery is actually the uh, tuner memory and the alarm clock memory. So tuner memory would be all your uh, favorite, favorite uh, radio stations, things like that. And the other thing is the, um, alarm clock memory. You know what? It also is the memory for the um, the LCD brightness and the so setting setting the LCD brightness um, that will once you set the brightness that will keep the brightness setting um, in memory. That's what the 9 volt battery also does. All right we're going to start by so you're going to gently jam it in between here and you're not really you're not really gonna pry much you're just gonna kind of push it inward right and that's it right there um, don't grab this and pull across here very gently you'll there's a tab and you're gonna just kind of hold it through like this so there's a groove that's here right another groove that's there and there's a tab that's here, right? The reason I say gently is because if you look, this piece here that's flimsy, that gives shade to the LCD. What it does is it tries to darken it up so it can be brighter. Um, that has nothing to do with setting the brightness, right? Um, anyway, that's how you would take this off. You can take it off, polish it, and reinstall it, or you can purchase a remanufactured one that's already been um, polished. All right, if you look here, uh, maybe I'll tear this part and show you on the inside, but you'll see there's two different, there's actual a remote control uh, sensor there, and there's your light sensor. Um, that that actually goes off of your, your uh, room lighting, the house lighting, or the window, if the window's open, it'll capture the brightness of the room and it will automatically brighten or uh, uh, dim the LCD. You can bypass that by setting the default and then you don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, so now you're gonna go ahead and grab your Phillips screwdriver. There's a Phillips screw in the uh, CD compartment area. You're gonna take that out. Turn it around and there's two Phillips screws on the back. Like, 
get back in there. Okay, so those are the three Phillips screws that are holding this together. The rest are actual tabs. Now, there is a tab hiding under each side below the speaker, right below the grill there. There's a tab here and a tab there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your plastic orange stick. I normally slide this out to the edge of the desk, but I'm gonna attempt to do it this way. And you're gonna put it right underneath. Let's see if I can put something under there. Okay, I'll do this. So you're gonna put it right underneath there and you're gonna tie it upward like that, like so. I don't know if you can catch that on the camera, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So normally what I would do is I would actually slide the deck to the edge of the bench, and I would do that same thing. But I wanted to, since I'm filming, I want to show you guys how to do that. But normally I would just slide it out and do exactly the same thing, and I wouldn't put it on the side. Okay, now that's that's done, you're going to lift up on it and lean it forward. Right. The reason you're doing that is because there's a there's a ribbon um, that's hooked up below the LCD, and I'll show you guys. So I'm grabbing it and I'm coming forward. Make sure two reasons: the ribbon and also the so when you're installing it, you're doing the same thing. There's there's a shade there. It's, in most cases, these shades are very brittle. Um, you don't want to crack that. Um, you don't want to damage it. So you. The only way you can divert from doing such a thing, you're actually grabbing it and you're leaning forward and then flip it back. There's your ribbon, which is sitting on the bottom of the uh, LCD uh, PCB, right? Your printed circuit board here. Okay. Um, typically, I would have this on my workbench, um, but let's go ahead and attempt to do it this way and see if I can do it with one hand. Okay, so you're gonna the LCD slides up the whole board. Like so let me see if I can do this this way. I typically would have something behind there, but let's see if I can do one handed. Alright, you're gonna grab that ribbon and you're gonna pull try not to wobble um, too much left and right very gently and that comes out pretty easily. There's a groove on each side, and that's where your PCB slides back in. Sorry. Let's see. All right. So that's the housing cover. Maybe I should show you real quick before we tear this up. Real quick. Put this aside. And so right now you want to clean the rest of this. You want to take it apart. You want to take the actual um, compartment door off. You're going to flip it over. There's a spring on the inside, which is here. That's your, the spring actually tensions the gear so it brings it down slowly. You're going to grab that, pull the loop off, and there's your spring. There's a plastic tab with a groove in it. So when you want to install it, install the bottom first. Listen to that little tick. Watch. That sound right there. And then you're going to grab it and you're going to hook it onto the top. So I can't see anything right now. But anyway, so that's how that reattaches, right? And it's back working again. Obviously without the spring, springs out, this door would just come down pretty quickly and it also won't stay up. Once your spring is off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it back over, grab your plastic orange stick, and you're gonna very gently, you're gonna pry, you're gonna put it in between, in between the arm here, the door arm, because there's a tab sticking out into that door arm hole, and that's what's keeping that on there. So I'm going to push it in, and now you got one side up. Once you have that side up, bring the door partially down, bring it back at an angle, and there it is, because you want to get this 
left arm, metal arm off of there. Be careful with the ribbon tape. And that's out. The rest of this, other than for a piece of foam that's there, that helps uh, keep the PCB pressed down on the unit. Um, you can actually get pretty aggressive with this and wash it um, and clean it up. Now, with this particular one, this is a solid charcoal, um, which means if you actually broke this plastic, the same color is is embedded within the plastic, where they there is a it's still the same exact model but a different rev. They actually painted some of these with a plastic paint. Um, that one you got to be very careful. Do not try to scrub or cl clean it with anything aggressive. Um, what will happen is you'll actually end up removing the paint on there. Um, and they've never painted any of the plastic doors, so what will happen is you, it'll no longer match. All right, let's put this aside. These CD doors um, sometimes tend to go bad just from how many times you press them or extensive amount of use on particular uh, buttons. Um, there's not much, not much to repair in, in the sense where you're going to actually take it apart and repair it. And uh, chances are when you take this thing apart, you're going to end up destroying it. I have taken them apart before. Um, there is a number of different tabs all around here. You're going to just end up cracking it. And like I said, um, it would be like trying to take apart your your Texas Instrument, uh, what is it, the TS-83 Plus, whatever the heck it was called, a graphic calculator to try to fix it. There's really nothing to fix in there. Um, you're just going to waste your time. Now, let's take the unit, bring that back. So they have a pretty elaborate speaker box. In fact, everything you see, all this black, right, even under the the CD um, assembly here, your optical assembly with the uh, stepper motor and your um, your lens, all of this below it is actually the speaker box. There is a single port, speaker box port sitting there uh, up against the right the speaker. Um, there are two different types of speakers. So if you open it up and look at it, you're like, oh God, someone swapped the speakers out and didn't put the right ones. It's actually meant to be that way. This is your uh, vocals, your highs um, speaker, and that's on the right. And your little subwoofer is on the left. And a quick way you can tell is the dust cover on this one is glossy and plastic. Dust cover on this one is actually paper or cardboard. Um, the surround on this, actually surround on both of them is amazing. Um, but the surround on this one is a fabric that's been uh, coated with a some type of uh, rubber adhesive to give it longer longevity or uh, longer life expectancy. And the surround on this one is actually uh, butyl rubber. And this is a surround on the woofer. Um, so that's butyl rubber. Um, obviously the butyl rubber one will last much longer, but regardless, um, it's, I have been taking these apart. I've probably taken apart more than, I don't know, a couple thousand of these, um, and trained, uh, a number of my techs back in the days on how to take these apart. And I'll tell you this much, I have yet to see a single one of these speakers, regardless of the high speaker or the, or, the, or your subwoofer. Um, where the surround is deteriorated and fallen apart. Like remember back in the days with the Surround Vega speakers where you see the uh, red rubber surround, all right, the foam surround completely deteriorated and fallen, has fallen apart. In this case, you don't have to worry about that. They don't, uh, they don't go bad at all. Um, that, uh, but, uh, okay, to that point, there has been a number of times where the speakers have blown right blown speakers different than having the surround 
messed up, right? So the the speaker is actually blown. Uh, chances are it's been overpowered. Listen, you're listening too much some uh, music with bass, and you didn't realize that the sound distortion. So at high levels, you'll get some very mild distortion. These are tuned real well, but you'll get some distortion, and the bass distortion will actually destroy more likely your subwoofer. Um, so in most cases, I've seen the subwoofer blown. Looking at it physically, you won't be able to capture that it's actually blown, right? So when a speaker blows, in most cases, um, your speaker, the speaker cone, which is this, your surround, which is this, and this is your dust cover, your, um, none of this actually falls apart. The damage is internal, and uh, the driver, which is basically a motor, um, has a coil that's wound inside, right? The coil ends up uh, burning up, and uh, 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 the magnet wire, that's what they use on the speaker uh, coils, will end up severing, and you'll have an open circuit. And that would be a blown speaker. In some cases, some people press up on it, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, I, but when I press on it, I can hear it, it plays. Well, you, when you press on it, you've actually made the uh, magnet wire contact, and you, very briefly you'll hear sound, but it's blown if that happens. Anyway, so that's kind of it for the speaker part of it. Um, if you want to remove the the LCD PCB, you're going to grab it and you're going to hold on to the ribbons. When I'm doing it, I'm actually holding the back of the of the board there and holding on to the um, the uh, uh, the plug there and pulling down um, just make sure that you hold it sturdy so you don't want to damage the solder to the board where your these are soldered to the board um, you don't want to loosen that or break break the solder um, but that's how you would take this piece out there's no reason if you did want to remove that it slides out the tab but um, and there's a hole there but that's just the shade to darken up the uh, LCD um, this LCD is actually made in Japan. Underneath there, right there it says made, there it is, uh, Japan. All right. I don't know if you guys can tell if I got it close enough, but you can tell it's made in Japan. Anyway, I told you guys that the bows use uh, incredible components, as I said in the first uh, part one. So if it's if it's not made in USA, it's made in Japan, and I think very highly of uh, Japanese components too. Um, all right, the power cord. Power cord sitting just kind of in a groove, cut out little U channel. You can pull up on it. It's out of the U channel. There's a tab on the back there. I'm going to press down on it, and I'm going to pull up. There it is, right there. So if the power cord is damaged and you need to replace it, that's what you would do. Heck, I have thousands of these darn things. Um, but that's how you take the power cord out. All right, now, turn this bad boy around. Um, if you need to replace the assembly, your assembly is actually very basic. It has two different plugs there. The, the power uh, cord plug, you're going to grab it, have a nice straight pull straight out, and that'll come right off there. That's how that comes out. There's no tab. You're not pulling down on any tab. There's no tab to push down on or pull up. It just comes right out. And the next one is going to be the power to your uh, the actual laser lens that you're um, so this is the assembly, right? Um, if you're having problems with with reading, right? So if it's it's not reading the CD, a lot of people are like, okay, well, how do I know what's wrong with it? Or how do I my my CD player is not reading? Um, so you put CD in, it spins, 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 and stops. Okay, so symptoms of a bad laser diode. Put your CD in, it spins, 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 and it stops, 
it keeps spinning. It slows down, speeds up, slows down, speeds up. It just, it's not picking up at all. Um, so if, if the diode is weakened or it, it plays, it takes a long time to finally track and finally play and then and at times it doesn't play at all and then other times it's, it's sporadic right um chances are the diode is weakening and these these are the symptoms of a bad diode at at one point it's just going to stop working um so at first it starts off this way and then at, at some point it'll just stop working um, so that's typically how you end up finding a bad uh, laser diode it weakens and uh, that's pretty much it or it gives you an error reading or whatever. Um, there's a number of different uh, uh, issues that it could have. So the prime suspects, okay, um, typically, typically it's the lens is dirty. However, however, if you've cleaned the lens and it's still doing it, there's a laser diode. The laser diode uh, can and will go weak. It's so if it's working fine, it's not a matter of it will never, it, it will at some point uh, go bad. Um, they just have a certain life expectancy and it just depends on how many years uh, the unit has played CDs. Um, so it's, it's kind of like purchasing a high mileage car and the miles were just freeway miles. In this case, you could purchase one that these decks are fairly old, right? They've been around for what, almost, 30 years now, um, it, they might have just listened to the radio a whole lot, AM, FM or whatever, and didn't use up too much uh, life of the CD itself, the, the CD player itself. Um, regardless, they no longer manufacture the, the, um, the optics here, the, even though I have like, I don't know, 10, I probably have couple thousand of these darn things um, these are brand new original bows assemblies um, oh the actual optics uh, these guys are extremely sensitive uh, ESD sensitive right um, so that would be that would be here. Let me, let me take one out. One of these guys. So I highly recommend if you're if you're gonna end up removing this and you're gonna touch it, make sure you have your ESD strap on. Um, just touching the the solder joints. Uh, on this one you'll actually um, potentially fry or lessen the life of the uh, laser diode extremely sensitive and uh, you don't want to do that so make sure that you have your ESD strap on when you're when you're touching any part of that um, you gotta make sure it's you're grounded anyway now there's a if you're trying to replace I don't even know where you guys would get it, but if you, if you have one, you're trying to place it, you're going to end up taking this Phillips screw out here, and you're going to pull this this shaft out. Let me probably have something to show. Okay, there's a shaft. Sorry, guys, I should have been ready. So these are these are the shafts that is sitting right there. So you'd actually have to remove that shaft, and then once you have that, you're going to twist it and pull it out. So that's how you take the assembly out. Um, not to say that here, like this one, it's already it just has your your motor and no optics, right, and no shaft. So that's already been removed. Um, Let's see if pull one of these out and show you guys.
All right, so you'll be holding on to this. Sorry guys, I normally would do this under a magnifier. So I'm trying, trying to do it here. Okay, so the shaft, you take a little Phillips screw out of there, you pull the shaft up and slide the shaft up. And then, so this actually slides back and forth like so. It kind of slides like that. Anyway, so you grab it. Once the shaft is out, you're gonna turn it to the left like that and pull out. And that's how you take the optics out. I have, I don't know, a crap load of these, so I don't care about touching it. But in your case, make sure not to touch it without uh, ESD strap. The speakers, if you want to replace the speakers, um, let me show you a quick trick. So, In this case, what I do is if the speaker is blown, you don't need to take the speaker wires off the speaker. It's actually very easy to swap the speaker out. And what I would do is take the speaker out with the wire and it's and it's attached plug. Out. Um, because of how old this is and they have a rubber rubber on the back frame of, of the speaker um, gently pry it out like so and flip it forward so it'll kind of be like that and there's your uh, rubber foam that's sitting back there what it does is it just gives it a nice seal to the um, enclosure there's a groove that's cut there. And that's where your speaker wire ends up. Make sure it's there and not sitting somewhere else so you don't pinch it when you install the when you reinstall the speaker. So you'll take the speaker wire that's here and it's gonna sit in that groove. Um, but turn that sucker around. And you'll see that the speaker wire is actually fed and held on to another groove tab here. Take that out and I'm going to press on the little tab button there and that comes right out like so and that's fairly easy. What I would do is I would just swap the whole thing out with the wire. If not, you're going to end up undoing it and uh, soldering it there um, if you swapped it out without replacing the entire wire. Um, a lot easier instead of doing any soldering. Um, you can just swap the whole thing out. If for some reason the unit stops working, there's no, it looks like there's no power whatsoever to it. There is a fuse and the fuse is sitting on the main motherboard here. It's sitting right there. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it there. Is that a good shot? But that's the that's the fuse there, and that's the main source power fuse. The only thing is, you can purchase a new one, and you can get them pretty much off of eBay or Amazon or whatever, um, but you have to know how to solder. Um, it's fairly easy, but these fuses are actually soldered. Um, the ends are soldered to the board. There is uh, plenty of room, if you know how to solder, to be able to get in there and, and solder, solder them. Um, you don't really have to worry about the power transformer going out. That seldomly ever happens. Um, but the fuse, in, in most cases, uh, the fuse will go out. Um, that could be anything from power surge in the house or, or with something, something to that point. Um, I've opened and I've had techs come to me um, and show me units where they're absolutely destroyed. I mean from 
jello to milk to all sorts of stuff spilling these things remember they most of these ended up uh, as I said in the uh, prior video ended up in a kitchen or a garage um, so you can imagine the things that potentially get spilled in in the units some of them uh, are repairable others are not um, we used to get literally hundreds of these every week um, to repair and send out back to the customer or back to Bose and um, in, in, in most cases in most cases they were repairable in other cases where something had spilled inside or you know was corrosive and it just destroyed everything and it just wasn't feasible to, to go in and try to um, repair it um, you can actually re replace the board which is not a big deal but it, you're not going to want to just repair components on the board um, not worth the hassle especially in our case where we had hundreds upon hundreds of these and and the parts were readily available back then um, anyway uh, the amplifier itself is sitting in the bottom there the MOSFETs for the amplifier is actually on the back of this heat sink so there's a heat sink here and you have a large MOSFET sitting there um, if if something did go wrong or you ended up touching the speaker wires together and shorting them for whatever reason you're doing this with the power running or you ended up spilling something and caused a short and everything else is working and there's no sound chances are you blew the amplifier uh, MOSFET and that's where you would where it would be um, uh, however if uh, if you have not done that type of soldering work before um, I would not recommend it um, heck I back in the days I wrote a uh, manufacturing process instructions uh, for my guys to use on how to dismantle and pretty much replace each and every part on this darn thing um, anyway, oh there's your internal antenna sitting right there um, sometimes every once in a while these uh, if these RCA's uh, were plugged in you had RCA wires plugged in and for whatever reason you ended up moving it too close with the wires there and caused the jacks actually to get damaged um, these are fairly easy to desolder and reinstall um, and you can actually get the the jacks the new jacks fairly easy um, the digikey sells sells these jacks um, also you still have to know how to solder but they're readily available on digikey a number of other um, websites actually suppliers have them um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell um, if you notice how simple it was to actually tear this thing apart um, the accessibility or the easeability for for the techs um, or is another another reason why I recommend this USA made first gen uh, unit over all the other newer ones that are made in Mexico um, it's not just because of the quality of the unit but it's actually designed very well it's very simple to work on where the other one where the CD actually goes in through the front there is so much so much that that can and does go wrong with them um, and there if, if you're not pretty savvy mechanically inclined or whatever you, chances are you're not going to be able to fix it it's like taking apart a VCR back in the days for the first time trying to figure out how how to to fix that um, anyway oh when you're pulling the assembly out make sure not to pull this ribbon up out of the out of the bottom of the motherboard it's very tight unless you have um, you're gonna have one heck of a time in some cases uh, guys have actually taken the entire speaker enclosure up and off in order to put that ribbon um, tape back in so don't yank on this when you're pulling you're pulling downward not pulling upward so you don't pull that out of there I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell if you guys have any questions or if you have issues with with one of your uh, units let me know oh if you guys are wondering how I ended up with I don't know couple thousand of these darn things um, thousands of Bose 
products. Um, we had a huge facility back in the days in California. Um, and we used to do a lot of the uh, repair work for, for bows. And uh, closed up because uh, every every six months to to a year we'd we'd get the rep would come in or, or set us a new spreadsheet and tell us that the prices have changed the prices have changed because competitors in in, in Mexico and, and other places were um, were lowering their prices and I know Bose was actually going out there and asking them to lower the prices and what they would say is okay well this is so we didn't actually come up with the prices to to give the bows or or to the customers that walked in through the door uh, most of the stuff was actually shipped directly to us from the customer or from bows under warranty however the the prices were already set so replace the transformer certain price replace the speaker certain price replace the optics certain price um and to that point every every six months or so we'd get a new spreadsheet with new pricing say, oh, and it got it got to the point where it just wasn't wasn't feasible anymore to be able to to employ all the employees and have so much overhead and and the prices kept dropping um i mean given this we were we were in it for i don't know geez about close to 30 years um but it got to a point where where it just it, there was you couldn't stay in business with them with the price points that they were hitting up and it ended up uh closing up so uh now i have a ton of these units sitting in my warehouse um and that's anyway that's how i ended up with all these units and some people are like you had a video blowing some of these up with fireworks or or putting expanding foam in them oh i have a ton of them and yes uh i paid back in the days the company um, paid for all of these so this is a huge huge uh, loss I love the units and they're they're awesome um, but ended up eating a lot of the uh, costs on these anyway um, if you have any questions hit me up I'll be doing more Bose videos on different Bose products from the cubes to the um, receivers I have tons of different receivers um, even the uh, so not just the satellite speakers but the monitor speakers and i'll be doing more stay in tuned and uh please i can use the help thumbs up subscribe subscribing is very important um hit that notification button so that way uh you know when i'm gonna hit up when your new next new video comes out 80s nut out